so glad to be here and share the car code story. And I hope um, I'll give you some add you add some value to your next startup. So um, I'm trying to uh, get engaged as much as possible, so that way you can learn something out of my presentation. So car code story is an amazing story. We built this uh, product uh, back in January 2014, and we sold it uh, to a, uh, one of the leading automotive uh, research and shopping a site called Edmunds in nine months. So it was an amazing ride. I just want to walk you uh, through our success story. And to make it interesting, I made a second part of the presentation that how we can uh, apply the learnings from car code and uh, apply this to customer support. I think a lot of presentations are round around customer support. So I want to share some of my learnings and how can we apply to customer support uh, in this regard. So um, again, they say, love your customers. For the next 20 minutes, you are my customers. So I'm going to be really engaging with you, and not to invade your privacy. But I like to get your feedback so I can improve my skills and my points that I'm giving to you as a speaker so that you don't waste your next 20 minutes with me next time. All right? So please text T, at T67 to that number, and let me know how I did it. OK? So. They say, love your customers. How do we love our customers? We have to respect them. That's the first thing. Gain trust and also follow up with them. Don't adapt, uh, abandon them. So get engaged and keep following up with them and let them, let them know uh, that you are there. And if there's a problem, they can reach out to you. Um, so first thing we're going to do is build an a, uh, MVP uh, for our SMS lead generation app for car code. So this is the experience that we went through. Uh, I want you to uh, be engaged and give me pointers. So I want your help to build the MVP. Uh, how many of you have built an MVP so that I can understand? Awesome. So there, um, have you guys used the lean startup methodology or waterfall or no process at all? What, what did you use? Did you follow a Lean Startup or Agile? OK. So with Car Code, uh, we believe in Lean Startup. Eric Rice is one of our heroes. Actually, we met him. It was really awesome. Uh, so we had a leap of faith, uh, trying to figure out, OK, how we are going to build this um, application. So um, before you start, again, you have to have some assumptions. Um, so you can have some leap of faith. Uh, we went back and researched what kind of uh, data we can find uh, based on SMS leads. So we found this 2012 survey done by Edmunds about shoppers' behavior. They are targeting uh, car, car buyers. And on that survey, they found out 34% of uh, customers are willing to start the sales buying process through SMS leads. So they don't. They don't prefer calling or emailing. They prefer texting. So this is a really good stat for us to get started. Uh, next one is we have to figure out the car industry. Myself, like you heard, I'm a software developer. For the last 16 years, I've been developing software, but I have no idea about the car industry. So uh, one of our co-founders had deep roots in the car industry. And based on that, we did a little bit research what kind of market we are dealing with. So our potential customers are about 16,000. When I say 16,000, we are talking about the car dealerships who are franchised, uh, not the used car dealership. And without them, we can't deliver our product to their customers. So we have to understand that. Uh, second one is how many cars they have sold. They have sold about 16.5 million cars in 2014, which is a very significant amount. So we want everybody contacting the dealer wants to be a hot lead so they can sell the car. Uh, and their revenues are about 800 billion, which is a huge market uh, compared to uh, other industries. Second one is we have to figure out who will be our users at the car dealership. 
when we are delivering SS, SMS lead, who will answer that lead? It's going to be the salespeople. So on the same report, they say that on average, 20% of the people working for a car dealership are salespeople. So on average, we are talking about 13 users at a dealership. They're going to use our application. So we want to, those are the guys that we are relying on making our application um, work. So we have to target them. And then we have to figure out how these car dealers advertising themselves. They spend a lot of money. I mean, you turn on the radio, TV, you hear all these ads from car dealers. But the good uh, thing is you can see a shift. They're spending more money on internet now because they, want, they understand the uh, culture is shifting. More and more people now on their phone browsing internet, so which is a big plus for us because um, I'm sorry, the connection lost. I'm back. Uh, because texting is based on your smartphone. So if people are browsing uh, car dealers' websites and their car dealers investing money on more and more advertising on the mobile phone or the, or the internet, in terms, which is mobile phones, if you look at the stats for internet browsing, I think we are 50, over 50% 50 people are browsing internet on their phone, which is, again, uh, a good stat for us to build our MVP. And uh, so let's build a persona uh, of a dealership. Uh, let's call, I'm a Michigan State fan, so I'm going to call uh, that dealer uh, Spartan Honda. So Spartan Honda manager knows, based on our stat, there will be 342 customers that we can close using SMS lead which is a significant amount of customers we can set close. All right, so assume that car code is not there. Let's see what are the options this manager will have. He can buy a cell phone from AT&T and advertise their number saying, text us, here's the number, and leave the cell phone on the sales floor so the sales guys can come and pick it up when there's a text message comes. But what if you have a really aggressive sales guy who wants to always answer the message? And w how can you distribute fairly so other salespeople have a better chance also getting leads? Uh, so that's a problem. Then, uh, how can I get these leads into my CRM so I can understand how my salespeople are doing? If I just buy and keep the phone there, the communication is not in my CRM. So that's another problem. I can't do my job as a manager and monitor how my salespeople are doing and what they're talking about. And what about the compliance, right? There's TCPA compliance where we are not allowed to reach out to customers without their being reaching out to us. And if we, they should have an option to opt out. Now again, Let's call that aggressive sales guy, Gordon, and he tried to push the uh, sales lead a little bit more information into the customer, and then customer doesn't like it because he keeps texting. So he doesn't have a way to opt out, so you might be violating TCPA rules. Uh, so with this uh, scenario, now we have understand our problems we are going to solve based on our um, MVP that we are going to build here. So this is a snapshot of our actual lead canvas that we built. I didn't put it here so you can read it, but I want to just talk about some key features that we touch based. So first thing is the problems that you, we identified as a, a car dealership, what they're going through. Second thing is key performance indicators. Without performance indicators, we don't know what we are doing. We, we can assume that we are on a hockey stick uh, curve, but if we can't measure where we are with, in the hockey stick, we don't know where we're going. So we have to understand what are our key performance. One of the key performance we want to identify is called the text response rate. The, if you study why people are texting, one thing is they don't want to call somebody. 
They, want, they don't want to email. They want to get a faster response. And they don't want to be tethered to a phone. They want to have freedom of texting and get a uh, an feedback or answer in a reliable time. If you text somebody, you don't expect somebody to text immediately. If he's not available, he'll text you maybe an hour later. So uh, that's the culture or the norms of texting or etiquette of texting, we call it. I came up with a word called text etiquette, but I can't buy the domain. Someone else beat me to it. So uh, anyways, so then another one big key uh, performance indicators is lead to sales ratio. We have to understand how many leads turn into sales. So if that ratio is big, that means we are really doing well. Salespeople, remember those 13 salespeople at Spartan Honda? They're doing a really good job answering their text messages and um, getting engaged with the customers. Then uh, the car code, let's assume we are delivering car code as a widget, where uh, the dealership can put this on their website as a button. So we can track how many displays that we did to get one click or one customer text us. So that's another good analytics we can perform our, uh, we can measure our performance. Um, then unique uh, value that we are providing compared to our competitors. So I want to say Kakod was not the first one to come up with this idea. There, are, there were other people, uh, mainly like there was one competitor who was mainly providing chat bits, like online live chat. And they came up with like a text start button. And when you actually do that, there's no um, follow up norms of texting. It basically does is send your information to the CRM, somebody will call you. And this is exactly what happened when we tested competitors. So they will not. They will get automated testing, but text, but they will actually call us to follow up with the car. So that's not what we wanted to build. We wanted to build that um, you texting with salesperson that will follow norms of texting. Again, our theme is love your customers, respect them, gain trust, trusting salespeople at car dealership. There's a big uh, issue. They are compared to US congressmen. That's like the least trusted. <laughs> Profession, so we are up against a big, big task here. We don't want customers to feel that you know just another car sales guy. We want customers to feel you know he's a friend. He's texting like a regular friend. So that's one of our uh, unique value propositions. So we wanted to build an app um, that we are not giving a lot of hoops so that salesperson has to go through the CRM, figure out what the number, and then start texting. We want that to be like just another, just like the salesperson using his own texting app. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we support not only phones, we support uh, desktop as well. Because you might, who knows, you might be at work shopping for a car. How many people are looking for a car right now? Awesome. So we got potential customers here. So you can use text. Um, and you might start your buying process on your desktop. And then there's text button. And you start your texting on the desktop. What will happen is it will follow you on your mobile phone. Uh, and then um, we talked about fair lead assignment. That is, uh, a dealership might have different rules how they assign uh, dealership uh, leads. They might have. Uh, again, um, uh, they might have round robin, or what we call first available, whoever gets to the phone. It'll be really good for that uh, sales guy who's gotten. Um, and uh, it can be assigned through CRMs. They have uh, sophisticated CRMs at dealerships, so you can tie into the CRM. Um, like I said, another one we were talking about is better sales uh, uh, person experience. And most importantly, we don't want it to build another app that you install on your phone. We want it to be a simple app that anybody can get on it really fast without any barriers. You don't have to go to App Store. They don't have to go to um, download or get tech support to do, play with this. So that's another val unique value pro proposition we proposed. 
Uh, other option we did is when you understand the car industry, there are a lot of uh, what we call website providers. They build the website for these dealerships. They control what goes on their website. And because of that, we thought it'll be, uh, we, we should build it as a platform. So these website providers also can white label our product. So we, we were looking at that aspect as well. So that's another unique value proposition we brought to the table compared to our competitors. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure. So where were you guys uh, as far as your formation of the company? Are you guys like working on the weekends for this, or is it, are you guys already all in at this point? Same we built it in, back in 2014, and we sold it in um, uh, October 2009. So, and as part of the deal, uh, one of my co-founders joined the uh, Edmunds. He's continued to improve this product. And then uh, we are hired as uh, consultants for a year to help them build this product. So uh, it's in the market. It has uh, a lot of traction. I'll go through with those uh, um, uh, tractions uh, quickly. <laughs> Oh, I thought uh, you asked today. No, like when you're building out this canvas, where you? Oh, we were, uh, we, um, when we're building out, a really good question. The question is, when we are building out this canvas, where were we? Um, as a company, we actually started back in 2011, but we had a different product. Um, based on the experience we had with this product, we came up with this idea to, you know, try this SMS lead generation. Uh, at that time, we, um, we had enough experience with startup to make sure we don't burn ourselves. And uh, while we are aggressively researching, and we also started building like the least cost example that we can provide, and then trying testing with the potential customers. Um, so that's what happened. So we built as we go, and then we, we were able to identify our roadblocks and try to uh, come up with the ways to address them. So next uh, slide is uh, the channels. How do you get to the, um, our customers who are car dealers? Uh, we can go and start selling them directly, which is not a really scalable solution. We have to call all these 16,000 dealers to try and sell them, and they are owned by you know, big, big uh, franchises, so you have to reach to the top level of franchise to figure out how to get to their dealership. The other option we had was enterprise sales. That means like those web providers I was telling you about. If you sell it to them, they uh, maybe have 5% of the market. So you can reach 5% through them. So there are players like Shift Digital, COBOL, Urban Science. Um, so they control these websites. So if we give them a white label solution, uh, they will uh, we'll be able to sell it to them uh, directly. Then the other option is like research website like Edmunds.com and also shopping website like cost.com, auto trader. So those are also our potential customers, enterprise customers, because people shop on those websites as well. And um, how do you think we should make money? Uh, should we charge per text or should we charge a monthly fee um, if we are directly selling it to the car dealers? Uh, we came up with a lot of formulas, but we uh, uh, decided to go with two uh, options here. We, we try to get our maximum cost. Like if so many people text a dealership 24-7, how many texts that they will get for a month? So we came up with an option. They, we'll just charge a monthly fat fee from the dealership. At that time, we were going to charge only $100 uh, for the dealership. Uh, but again, your pricing has to be adjusted based on what you're learning. So uh, it's an evolving thing. You cannot just uh, decide, okay, you know, we're going to charge this. But if you look at so many websites like uh, API providers, they keep changing their prices. Even Tulio, uh, they keep optimizing their prices. So there's no one formula to do pricing. It's a very difficult uh, situation. Uh, next one is enterprise licensing. Enterprise licensing, again, for white label customers. So they can you know, sell this as one of their products. Uh, uh, that way, we can have a bigger 
um, sail with them. So the cargo solution, how would you implement? We will. What did you sell the enterprise for? Uh, it'll be white label, so they can sell it like one of their products. The widget that they deliver will go to a white label website. For example, let's say Edmunds, yeah. which is a true, now they they own it, but we were we build a white label solution for Edmunds. So if Edmunds customer text it, dealerships see that it's Edmunds website. So they don't see car code. So that's what I mean by I was just trying to get your thinking about what is it worth to go to someone like Edmunds. Oh, okay. So the question is what is worth to go to someone like Edmunds. So um, if you look at Edmunds stats, they have about five to 6,000 dealers, which is a huge market share if you compare 16,000 dealers. So we can reach or land grab so many dealers if you go to that. So our strategy was to land grab um, uh, at that level. No, we will, we will give a very low discounted rate because we want to land grab. Yeah, did I answer your question correctly? All right, um, so, so, so the solution would be dealer comes in, they sign up, they get a number, it's obviously from Twilio, and then we give a widget code, they can put it on their uh, website. And once they put it, when the customer browse, based on the phone or desktop, they will get a button, text us, or if it's on your desktop, they'll get us two-line form saying, hey, enter your phone number, and here's the message, and then you, we will follow up uh, with them on their phone. Um, then once, the, once we get the text, okay, we gave the dealership to set up their rules. Okay, how do you want the leads to get assigned, like we were saying in our value proposition? So based on those rules, we will route it to salesperson and then send alerts. Salesperson also can say, hey, I, I just want to get my alerts only through email, I, even though uh, I have a phone, I just don't want a, you to text me. So they can say only through the email, and also they can say, hey, I want to get alerts only through my CRM. Um, then the salesperson gets a link. He won't get the full message on, on his phone, uh, or the email, or the CRM, because we want them to follow the norms of texting. We want them to visit our link and once they visit our link, we give them an app, a optimized mobile app and also desktop app, they will see just like a text stream. And they can just start texting with the customer as you're texting with the, um, a friend. So that's what we did. And then we provided uh, option so that customers can opt out. If you don't want to continue the conversation with the dealership, you can just say, hey, stop, and then we will make sure that customer will not be bothered again. And you will, you will have, as a dealer or a salesperson, you will see the conversation, but you will not get a chance to reply uh, or send another message. Uh, that's how we became uh, TCPA compliance. And also, we send out uh, the conversation to their CRM, and this also went as a link, so when the manager clicks, they get updated conversation on our website, not on the CRM. So these are the initial MVP features we built, but these features kept evolving. We didn't really stop at it. We, we, as we get mass, uh, went through this in a way to a uh, curve, we had to uh, build additional features so we can get the early majority. So um, then if you are building such a solution, actually it's not a difficult thing to do. You can build world-class application because you have these composable APIs that will help to scale you. 16 years ago, if I was building this, I had to deal with Java, J2E, EJB, and all those, this thing, because we didn't have pluggable APIs or composable API, I had to write all that, but today, um, like we, I said, we did this within two months, the first uh, beta, and we used these uh, incredible APIs uh, at our uh, doorstep. So I want to bring up a couple of ones like Twilio, which has given, I mean, they have revolutionized the telephone industry. Without Twilio, we would have had to you know, make big deals with AT&T and all the other providers to come up with this solution. But we, we just have to go there and sign up and get our API and start texting. 
So that's what we did. Uh, so this is one of our slides from a pitch deck. Uh, that's the car code story. And um, we, if you look at the uh, adoption life cycle, uh, the 100% of this uh, bell curve is 16,000. So we knew we had to get to around 2,600 dealers to reach the tipping point. As they say, once you pass the tipping point, you can uh, get your early majority in as, I don't know how many of you read uh, Chasing the Chasm uh, book about this curve. So um, you have to keep innovating to get your early majority uh, as you go through this curve. So that's what is happening today. Uh, so when we started, uh, we started the beta uh, back in January, like I said. We were fortunate enough to get selected to Edmunds Hackomotive event, which is a hacking event for um, anybody who's innovating for car dealers. And it's the best event you can get in. Um, we won the first place at that. And there were about 70 applicants. They selected 13. Uh, to come and do the presentation and go through their uh, hackamotive process. And with that, we got tremendous uh, publicity. Um, New York Times, Boston, Globe, even local uh, papers covered us, and then dealers found us through those articles, and we got a lot of sign up through them. Um, another thing happened was by uh, like June, we were close to 400 dealers. Uh, so we, we were uh, going a little upwards. Uh, am I running out of time? OK, I'll be quick. Uh, the, during that time, uh, we were invited back again from Edmunds because we were trying to sell them an enterprise deal. So they, they liked us the pro as the product and also part of the winning the uh, Hagamotive. They loosely told us, you will be invited to do an acceleration inside Edmunds. So we got invited uh, back to Edmonds, and this, uh, they had a program called Fastlane, which was a three-month acceleration program in-house. They gave us all their resources. They treat us as one of their internal teams. So we were able to validate all our assumptions or leave of faith on these big customer base. So we were able to identify techs actually not disrupting extincting uh, media, actually have a net lift. One of the studies, A-B test we did, we saw a, like a 40% lift on texting. Um, and uh, around October 9th, uh, it, we, when we were going through the deals with the licensing agreement, they said, well, you know what, we want to own you. And we, they throw a number that three of our, our co-founders can agree. And it basically changed our lives. And we agreed to uh, uh, acquire the uh, Edmunds deal. So these are my three co-founders. Uh, one of them is over there. Thanks, Nick. And yeah. <laughs> and other guy is Steve. And uh, again, uh, we had a blast. And it's like a dream. So I encourage you to you know, uh, start thinking about uh, you know, any, any industry that you can uh, use messaging or, you know, it, whether it's web RTC or anything, that's, that you can start small. And you just need to get out there, go into these hacking events, and try to reach these, like, uh, people who are, you know, controlling the industry. So we had a blast. So thank you very much. Sorry about taking extra time. Uh, any questions? Yep. Have you taken this to, I mean, certainly great uh, relevance to the auto industry. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Um, every other vertical out there probably has it's a similar need. So do you call it? Yeah. I'm stylist SMS and everything else? Yeah. <laughs> That's my second part. I'm running out of time. <laughs> uh, that was the next time I'll talk probably I'll give you. But this, we learn that we can take our platform to verticals. Mainly, like even like your Chinese takeout store, they can like put this on their website, and you can ask for uh, the delivery or the order the menu. Uh, one more slide I will show you is this one. Is you all know who Comcast is? 
But if you try to contact them, you waste like five minutes to get to one of, one of the agents. And sometimes, I'm, with all due respect, Tom says his agents are available 24-7. If you really try to call them in the night, it's just the automated message. And they just say, oh, you may now hang up. <laughs> but you know, if you, if you provide, uh, I had a recording here, but if you provide a, a texting solution, all I have to do is say, hey, hello, I have a problem, or I have to talk to somebody about my lowering bill. And they can text us back saying, hey, verify your address. Is there the service available? And if I say yes, the context is here that uh, they up my bill. So I try to contact them and lower it. But they put me through five, six you know, options. And then they say, you may hang out because the business uh, hours are between this and this. But if I text it, they can track me. And if they be like smart, they can put like natural processing, na natural language processing knowledge on top of it, like IBM Watson. And then they can channel uh, my request to the relevant department and send me back a test saying, hey, our billing department is closed. But don't worry, we have opened a ticket for you. And then based on their volume, they can predict when they will come back and text me. And then Comcast making uh, made like close to $3 billion in the first quarter of um, 2015, and their profit is like close to 70 percent, and they can give us a better service than that. So uh, this is why I said this second MVP that we're going to tackle. So thank you, thank Pro. you very much. Let's give them a hand.